First, I want to say I'm sorry to everybody for not answering all the, well, actually, for not answering any of the comments for Part 23. I've really, really been busy of late. Uh, I've been working closely with Brendan to get this set to have a little better picture. Uh, I've been running a DVD off of the uh, DVD player and into this box right here, this little converter box here. And then from there, I was running it over to this uh, 75 to 300 ohm adapter. Well, that didn't work out so well. So Brendan said, what you need to do, I mean, we were getting a lousy picture. He said, try hooking the cable directly uh, to the back of the tuner. Uh, just send it in as a 75 ohm signal. So I said, all right, I'll do that. So I went ahead and removed the... Uh, the flat cable that was in there that goes into the back of the tuner and uh, this is what we did with it this is the antenna cable that connects uh, from the backing on the television that masonite backing these two uh, plugs right here plug into a, a couple of clips on that masonite back of the TV and then it leads on in and plugs into the back of the tuner and this is a picture of it right here. There's that, that round hole or that round dark circle you see right there. Right there. Let me get a pen here and make sure we're all on the same sheet of music here. That little round circle right there is where it plugs into. And this, the other end, which is a round plug, has four pins on it. Comes in and plugs into the back of that, just like there. Well, we're going to convert this... Uh, television to strictly 75 ohm feed using a 75 ohm cable like this, an RG6U. So what I need to do is connect this cable to the back of this jack. And then once it's connected, then I can connect the entire thing into the back back there. Up here in the top left hand corner of the schematic, it shows the antenna connector. And down here it shows if you have a 300 ohm lead in, this is how you connect it to the back of the connector. And if you have a 75 ohm cable, in this case 72 ohms, uh, because it's a very old TV, uh, it shows you how to connect it here. Now, I've blown that up, or I should say my buddy Brendan blew that up and sent it to me in an email. And here's what we've got. This is what we have right now. We have a jumper across one and five, and then the two connectors running out to the back of the television. Two wires running out to the back of the TV. And those would be those two plugs right there. Plug in there. And this, as you can see, see the jumper wire on the right there? Let me see if I get over here in the light where you can see it. The jumper wire is on the right between those two pins, and the other two is just this flat... Uh, TV cable. Anyway, what we're going to do is remove that mess and we're going to take the coax cable and we're going to, first I'm going to run a wire from pin after this is all stripped, after this is all removed and I have nothing but a plug left I'm going to run a wire from pin 1 to pin 4 and a, and a wire from pin 2 to pin 5 and then I'm going to connect the, the shielding of the coax cable to pin 1 and the center wire on the coax cable to pin 5. Piece of cake. Anybody can do this. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and remove all these wires first. I took a piece of wire and uh, stripped it back and made it look like a little doggy. <laughs> it's a little doggy without a tail here. And I put a loop in one end that would make like the head. That's going to be the terminal that we solder to. Just twisted a loop into it, put two downward legs. And I'll show you here in a second how that's going to fit in. That's how she fits in. Just crisscross, and the loop sticks up in the air and gives me a place to solder to. Just stick the wires down into pins. And there she is, all ready to be soldered up. Uh, the two loops and the two opposite ends. Once I get them soldered up, I'll probably split them apart just a little bit more to make sure I have plenty of space between the two loops, but we'll be ready to go here shortly. I couldn't use that 75 ohm RG6 like I wanted to. I had forgotten that that stuff has an aluminum uh, 
shielding. You can't solder aluminum shielding. No matter what you do, it just doesn't work out. So, what I'm going to do, or what I did, is go ahead and get some uh, RG59, and I soldered some RG59 onto it. And uh, it's got copper shielding. Now, it's not very thick copper shielding. I don't know if you can make that out very well, but it's pretty thin, really. I've got it tinned right there. And here's the center conductor here. This will now plug in in that direction. It, you know, it, before the cable came down from the bottom, I didn't, I didn't like that too much. I want it to come from the side where I can plug it in this way. And this RG59 should work just fine. All I need now is a, a coupler that I can couple the, the one coming from the DVD player uh, uh, or from the uh, adapter box to here. And the reason I say this has got to work, I mean, look what we had last time. It's just a piece of flat wire crap, you know, and it works fairly decent. So if that'll work, this will work. It better work. I wanted everybody to see what was in this box as part of this video. I've had it for several months. It was one of the uh, first things I bought when I first started restoring this television. Brendan told me about it. He said, you know, you don't need one, but I just wanted you to be aware that they existed. Well, my curiosity got the best of me. <clears throat> it's called a Picto Guide, put out by RCA, and this one happens to be Volume 3. And, like I said, my curiosity got the best of me, so I went out on eBay, and I found one, and I bought it. I wanted to see what it was, and it came in a nice, neat little box. I had to do some taping. It's an old, old box, as you can see. And here's what it looks like. A little red book in there. Picto Guide, RCA Television, Volume 3. It says on the front, uh, as old to TV, oh, an aid to TV troubleshooting, I guess is what it says. It's very difficult to read down here. All right, now what's inside this thing is it has pictures with things that are wrong with the screen when you fire up your TV. And uh, it'll tell you what section to go to where the problem is. And it gives you a lot of good information, external ghosts, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of problems here. What caused, you know, this is caused by hum, I guess, this kind of a picture. And they use the test pattern a lot. Here's one that's all tore up. Apparently, I don't know what this severe 60 cycle horizontal picture is produced by heater to cathode leakage in a horizontal AFC discriminator. There it is. See, that kind of gets you in the ballpark area. It doesn't tell you exactly what it is and the problem, it doesn't cover everything. I thought it was kind of neat that the repairmen were able to have something like this. Here's one where the uh, picture's inverted. And uh, here's one with a whole bunch of different bars on it. I don't know what really it caused. I haven't read everything, but they use the old test pattern a lot, like I said. This one here is scrunched in from the side, and so is this one. And this is a real mess here. Anyway, these are kind of cool. You need a washed out picture there. All kinds of weird crap look at these things tell you a whole lot of things uh, that, that you know it was kind of neat it's kind of cool reading I just wanted you to all see one of these it's called a picto guide it says volume 3 but I don't know how many volumes there were it could have been 95 for all I know all right here I have the new cable plugged into the back of that tuner and uh, it feeds out and it comes out here and I've got two alligator clips hooked to it and the two gator wires hook to another cable over here so there are two sets of gator wires connecting two cables together what I need is a uh, I'm going to get a coupler I'll try to pick one up in the next day or two and couple these two together so I don't have to do this but this is you know a way to check right now and then of course that cable comes up feeds into the box and into the DVD player so we've been kind of, you know, fiddle-farting around with this TV. In the beginning, it was a really bad, really bad uh, picture. But I think uh, now we've made some improvements. Right now, we're experiencing uh, some roll, some vertical roll. And I'm going to be taking the chassis back out and check uh, a few components around uh, V14. And uh, let's see what I can do. Maybe we can get this... Uh, Let's see if we can get this thing to play a little bit here. 
Then the longer it plays, the better it gets, of course. Except for the roll. <laughs> it gets pretty good. It does good. I'm happy with her. So that's what's been going on. Working like a dog, trying to get her better.